Welcome to the GCN Tech Clinic, where we aim to answer your bike tech maintenance related questions. As ever, you can submit your questions down in the comments below using the hashtag AshGCNTech, and we'll do our best to uh, answer as many of them as possible within the allotted time. <laughs> Who's up first, Alex? Roman Lou. Hey guys, great show. As a newcomer to the sport, I always learn a lot. I have a Triban RC520 from Decathlon, which comes with a quick release system. However, I'm thinking of upgrading the wheels in the near future. I'm just checking out some options, but a lot of them are through axle only. I was thus wondering how difficult is it to convert a QR bike to through axle? Is it even possible slash practical? Thanks in advance. No. Quick answer, no, don't do it. <laughs> there, is, there, there are axle adapters though. You can get axle adapters that will make through axle wheels fit in a quick release frame and they cost like under 20 pounds or dollars. Yeah, so it's an you, option. Yeah, so uh, um, like a lot of brands as well, like when you know Mavic used to sell their wheels with the adaptability yeah. to turn them into either, um, yeah, one or the other. But that is the way to do it. Don't go adjusting your frame. No, God no. no. Next question. Uh, too old for this says, help guru masters. Need to send my carbon frame off to repair. It's a giant Defy Advance 2022 model. Um, and one of the seat stays got damaged on a flight. Oh, got oh. Should have had a Topeak Pat Go X. <laughs> Best bike box out there. Um, I've never I've never stripped a bike <laughs> with uh, partial internal cables, so they're stripping their bike down of all the bits yeah. to send just the bare frame off for fixing. Um, advice, please. Love the show and enjoy the banter between Alex and his sidekick. <laughs> My right. name's not Alex. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, carry on. Oh, you flicked that around well. Um, right, so advice on taking a bike apart internal cables. If, I mean, you can just take it apart and then deal with the aftermath afterwards. And then, but all the you really... Aftermath, that sounds good. Yeah, but all you really need to do is to have an internal routing kit, which will help guide it through, or some time and patience to use things like old gear cables to feed through the frame. And whilst the frame is like at the early stages of building, you can literally position it around and use gravity to help feed all the cables through. Yeah. And it's really a case of like, like taking your time, using small little picks to like hook the cables out through the openings in the frame. Um, the yeah. ideal world is to use sleeves and replace them over the cables as you're taking them out of the frame. Yeah. But if it's getting sent off to That's be repaired. It. So yeah, like Alex says, Normally when you do a maintenance job, you have sleeves or a routing kit with you so that as the cable goes in, as your cable goes out, you're replacing it with a sleeve which can use to guide the next cable. But like I said, in this instance, because they're probably going to want the frame not even with sleeves in it for repairing yeah. and painting, <clears throat> you, unfortunately you can't do that. So the best yeah. thing to make your life easy when you come to reassemble your bike is park tool cable routing kit. Here's they a are, picture of They are now. mega, yeah. <laughs> They make life so much easier and they, well, they, you know, yeah, I stop, think that's you, a, stop a lot of swearing. <clears throat> yeah. Um, Andy E. Mai, we missed this question. Looking at a lower end SPD pedals for road bike bike packing for the walkable shoe, um, need an even wider Q factor than the jump from road to mountain bike pedals. Should I get Shimano 520s with spacers or go for the SQ Lab 511s? Well, I can't say I know the other pedals, but. If you can find a pedal option which suits your needs rather than having to use an adapter and spacer, I would probably look to do that. But you, you, you're getting the same result basically. Well, it's like with like speed plays, they offer them with different yeah. axle lengths. <clears throat> a lot of pedals do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can just get ones with the wider key factor and like yeah, going for a wider, a longer axle pedal. And yeah. Shimano do longer axles as well. Yeah. It, it's, it's that's always a better option than than using spacers and adapters. Yeah. That's what I would say. Um, next question is from J Smith 84 who says, I ride a Cervelo Soloist with 28mm tyres. I've been debating trying to get into cyclocross later in the year, yeah. and maybe some gravel rides. What issues, if any, would arise if I added 33mm tyres to my current <coughs> bike instead of buying a new one? Oh. The Soloist can have up to 34mm tyres. Would I be at a significant disadvantage versus a full gravel or cyclocross bike? All right, immediate answer. In the dry, pretty much no difference. The difference is gonna come when you start involving mud because you're gonna have far less mud clearance than what you would have on a dedicated cyclocross bike. And it's gonna like gunk all up. Worst case scenario, you're gonna really have the back wheel struggling to turn around. But in the dry, dusty conditions, you're gonna be able to save a chunk of money by not buying a second bike. And by having, and also the other thing, is by not having <coughs> that clearance in the wet, you are gonna just do a load of damage to your frame and paint oh, with like God, yeah. the wheel spinning like a belt sander 
grabbing this dirt and crud and, and scratching it against the frame because you don't have that clearance. I'd also be mindful of that in the dry. That's a really good point. So you could look to add some um, like clear protective tape. Maybe but then down that's the going to limit seat. your clearance as well. Yeah. But yeah. I that, think that, that's, it's, that's, it's definitely possible, but the yeah. mud clearance is going to be your real like issue as such. I've definitely done <clears> gravel <throat> rides in the summer in certain places where it's like very nice gravel, where you could have gotten away with a modern road bike with really good clearance, yeah, like the Canyon Ultimate, and that, that yeah. won the Gravel Worlds in the first edition. Which is <laughs> yeah, a testament I forgot to, about that. That's a testament to that. That's the beauty of modern road bikes with disc brakes, you've gained extra tyre clearance. Yeah, yeah. but I, I would be worried about scratching them and also, they're not quite as rugged as a, as a yeah. gravel bike. Um, um, next ne question. Next question is, a, hello, I want to share my Wahoo kicker with my girlfriend who is seven centimetres taller than, smaller than me without us having to change bikes in it for each indoor ride. I thought if we buy a cheap bike that is slightly smaller for me, and then they say what well, frame size these, and we could keep this as a one permanent setup, and each of us just have to adjust the seat post for riding in the virtual worlds. Plus, on nice winter days, um, we could ride outdoors without having to dismount any other bike from the kicker. So they're saying they can't get the bike to fit 100%. They only ride about 500 kilometers a winter. What's our opinion on this? Do you think it's a budget-friendly solution, or would we recommend a different setup? Thanks um, for your dedication to the channel. I mean, two minds. If you want... 100% it's possible. If mm. you want to have the most the simplest and most cost-effective option, yeah, get yourself a cheap bike, and just every time you want to use it, jump on it, get the saddle to the right height, and away you go, and just accept the fact that you've not quite got the optimal setup for either person, but you've saved a chunk of money. Mm -hmm. If you do want to get into indoor riding a little bit more, then I think you're going to have to deal with the hassle of changing the bikes over. But once you, it's like anything, once you practice it and got used to doing it, it's not really a huge hassle, I is it? I think like ch swapping bikes over on the trainer, it's only like a, a couple of minutes. Yeah, but I think we're looking at it from someone that does it regularly and is like happy doing it. But I think some people aren't like super confident. You can learn, like, you can learn how, sort of how to do that. You know, yeah. there's, there's, yeah. there's, it's, it's, there is a little knack to it, but it's it's an easy thing to do. And I wouldn't be if it were me, I would just swap the bikes over. That's what I would do, um, but. If you don't want to change the bike saver, it is an option and it will save you some money. Yeah. Um, last question uh, here, which is from blah blah <laughs> 5604, who says, Hi Alex Nolly, I have a question regarding sunscreen. Ooh. Currently, most sunscreens use octocrylene or similar chemicals. Now, recent studies have shown that these products could possibly cause cancer because they decompose to benzophenone. In Hawaii, they've banned the use of these sunscreens because they interfere with marine life. Um, an alternative is sunscreens with titanium dioxide. How do these uh, hold up in a high sweat environment like cycling? Thanks in advance for your answer. So I did a, a really interesting video um, like before Christmas that was a chat with um, a, a scientist. Yeah. Who, it's all about cooling and like why if you keep, it's called keep cool, ride faster. Oh, yeah. And in that, he spoke a lot about sunscreen because he was basically saying that most of us just use, and I asked, like, I was talking to pro riders, and a lot of them aren't on this train. So okay. this is something that we can do right. Yeah, we can get better, it right, okay? yeah. And it's like, it's a thing. So a lot of teams just have a bottle of sunscreen on the, on the team bus, and it's just normal, like, creamy sunscreen that is, like, the cheap stuff, the normal stuff. Yeah. Off the shelf, like, from the supermarket. Yeah. Yeah. Now... That is, it's like a cream, the cream-based ones. They are nowhere near as good for cooling because they like clog your sweat pores. Yeah. Okay. And so that's that's inhibiting sweating, which is your main method for cooling. And, and, and you have like a temperature threshold as well. So you know, you talk about uh, threshold of like you know your breathing and stuff and yeah. your lactate. What we don't talk about is temperature threshold, which is like a big thing that's coming. So this is a really interesting thing for me. And the, the answer that he suggested, and he said, like, the best teams are doing this in the heat, is using alcohol-based sunscreens that okay. you, you will have seen them, they're like they're more expensive. Um, they're the ones that like spray on. Yeah. But I didn't, I wasn't aware of this when I saw this comment about octocrylene being bad. And I Googled it and had a look and did a bit of research. And I've seen that in Paris they're looking to ban it in France. And oh, in, so it in, is a thing. It is a thing. And, yeah. look, and so thanks for pointing this out in the comments. Really appreciate it. But the the brand of sunscreen that 
I've been using that is a spray-on one for better cooling. Yeah, is does contain it. Oh, really? And so I'm 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 now on the hunt. reconsidering. Yeah, I'm now on the hunt for one that doesn't. So I'm going to. Well, I mean, have a look. it is an interesting subject. I mean, the the science and the chemicals behind it is something that obviously you're far more interested in. But it's a really important point to to raise. Sai has also done a video all about like should cyclists wear sunscreen and the damage that it can cause your skin. So. I mean, it's a subject which I can't say I know much about, but I really feel like I should pay far more attention to, well, as well yeah. as everybody else. As Baz Luhrmann said, wear sunscreen. It's one <laughs> piece of advice we can yeah. give you for the future. Um, so yeah, but if anyone in the comments knows of a sunscreen brand that is, an al- crucially, an alcohol spray-on one that's not like, you know, cream, because yeah. we want that for the performance of cyclists, that is, doesn't contain... Um, These products. Well, oxy- oxycrylene. Uh, octocrylene, sorry. Then, um, yeah, well, want to know? Share. Let us know. Share it far and wide. We'll, we'll, we'll right, that's it. it for this week's GCN Tech Clinic. Hope that it's answered your questions. Um, as always, let us know in the comments section down below if you've got any other questions that you want us to answer, and we'll get to them in the coming weeks. See you later. Bye.